To the left, we have the LG G2. To the right, we have the Samsung S95B, and today I'll be giving you an in-depth comparison to let you know which one looks better than the other. Now, the short answer, it's a tie. They both do an incredible job, and I genuinely did not expect the G2 to hit as hard in the areas that it did. So if you wanted that answer and you were like, hey, which one between the two should I get? I would say it is a tie. You do win with either one. Now, in terms of being just like straightforward and candid as far as what I personally would do, I still would select the Samsung S95B because the color intensity is just so much better and the highlight placements of things just really change the game entirely to an entirely different level in my opinion. So one of the things I wanted to do, I wanted to pause this frame to talk about key differences that cannot be surpassed no matter how much calibration or hours you put into it. The blue is just always going to be better on a W OLED display. So if you look to the left, I think it's pretty apparent. That ambient casting of that cyan is superior to anything that Samsung is producing. Now, as we go through different examples, though, things do start to change. One of the things that definitely change, I don't know how well this is going to show up on YouTube. I genuinely don't. But I'm going to do my damnedest to try to capture it for you. Okay, so I'm going to pause right here about five seconds in. Okay, red. This is where you have the problem on the, Sam on the LG. LG targets a red that is closer to the color orange and it is like a more sunburst orange called blood orange you can google a picture of blood orange to see the exact shade I'm talking about it is really just like kind of like a grapefruit looking orange it's not really red where Samsung produces red pretty much perfectly and that's where we have a problem because that is one of the major primary colors, and when that goes amiss, it kind of gets rough to see everything represented accurately. And I think that's, for me, where I would choose the S95B. Colors are just better in terms of their vibrancy, where they need to be placed, the color coverage. All of that is better on the S95B, covering up to 90% of the future-proofing color space, BT2020. In English, this has a whole hell of a lot more variation in color than what the LG can produce. Now, just because that is the case doesn't mean that in practice that's how it always plays out. So as we can see as things go forward, we notice that, yeah, the cyan casting is still going to be better on the LG. Blue in general is going to tend to be a little bit deeper in some instances, but not always. Like now, the royal blue here on the screen is better. Yellow, it's about a tie. I actually find that in most cases, the yellow on the LG G2 actually surpasses that of the S95B. And it kind of goes back and forth like this the entire time. Now, there can be no doubt from clarity and from highlight placement, it's just a different animal. Look at the screen right now. The S95B is just producing a highlight that, again, LG can't produce. It's not as bright. I know that there were people that were claiming that, hey, this is the brightest OLED we've tested. I know I saw our tings talking about that, but the truth is, in real-world applications, it's not the case. That's definitely not how it plays out. Now, I've gone ahead and switched to the standard picture mode, and I want to do this in real time so that you guys see, again, that there is no funny business happening here, okay? We're going to go to OLED care. We're going to go down to device care. We're going to go down to energy saving, and you can see energy saving is off, okay? So there's no energy saving on, okay? We're then gonna go over to general. We're gonna go to AI service. You can see that there's no AI brightness, so no automatic brightness happening here, okay? And then we're gonna go finally into the picture settings here, as you guys can clearly see. We're gonna go over into the picture settings, and you guys are gonna be able to see like for the brightness, this is standard by the way. It's pretty much stock. I didn't do anything to these values. Um, this is kind of how it ships more or less. All I did was pump OLED light up to 100 and contrast up to 100 and peak brightness up to high. So trying to max out the brightness, it still cannot compete with what we have on the Samsung S95B. As you can clearly see, the better highlights all around, it's just brighter. It looks so much better, so much more lifelike than what we have on the LG. So even if we were to use that as a, a baseline, it wouldn't work, especially because this is only medium on the peak brightness. Let me show you what high looks like. So here we are with the menu pulled back up. Medium is where we're at now. This is what high looks like. 
Look at how much brighter it gets. It's a day and night difference. LG cannot produce this level of highlight throw. Just look at the white here, okay? Right over here and how it blows up into, look, bam, just a whole nother level. You can visibly see that luminosity change and that is just still dim. So again, even if we were trying to do an apples to apples comparison, it wouldn't matter because again, I can open up the menu here on the LG and show you in real time yet again. I'm in standard mode, right? A mode a lot of people are probably gonna use. And then we're gonna go into the brightness and show you again, everything is bright. Contrast maxed out to 100. Um, medium dynamic contrast is where it's at from the manufacturer. I didn't touch that, but I did change peak brightness to high as I showed you. And then counteractively, we go into all of those things that some people could use to maybe defraud you out of the information or the honesty, like for example, going to OLED care, device self care, and then going down to energy saving and turning that on, for example. You see here, it is off, it has been off, it will stay off, right? And then again, another method people can use to maybe try to trick you and make the G2 look worse is going into AI brightness and turning it up, which dims down because it's using the ambient light sensor. So I'm not doing any of those like faux tricks or anything. This is as genuine as it gets. And as you see in real time, medium is beating out the, uh, the, the, the G2 medium on the Samsung S95B. Let that sink in. This is the baseline, most basic, like it's not even... You know what I mean? Like it's not even at its full potential and it is already kicking all kinds of ass. And I'll just kind of level with you guys. Backlight is kind of lowered on the S95B as well. So even though peak brightness was on is on medium right now and it's not on high, the backlight isn't even on 100. I think I lowered it to something like 90. So I'm not even joking when I tell you the luminosity differences are massive. I stand corrected. It wasn't 90, it's actually 36. So this thing can actually get a whole hell of a lot brighter than even what I'm representing here in this comparison. Now, for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna max it out. And you, you can kind of get the idea that this is still medium on the peak brightness and it's starting to look a lot closer to something well beyond even just medium. But don't take my word for it. I'm gonna go a step further. So right now, the peak brightness, I just turned it up from 36 to 50, right? Let me show you now when we go to high on the peak brightness. So there it is before, you see it, medium, right? Now watch what happens when we go to high. Bam, just look at all of that luminosity. It's so intense, my camera can't even keep up with it anymore. There is no argument that can be made where the G2 can possibly even hold a candle to what we're getting on the S95B. It's just not a possibility. And I know that might upset a lot of people, but it's so very true. This is just the brighter TV. And I wanna, again, spend the time in this particular portion. I know it's lengthy and I know it's long-winded, but I wanna spend the time here explaining this to show you that even if you are in the standard mode, even if you turn off everything, even if you max out everything, even if you have peak brightness set to high, right? There is no outcome on earth that you can arrive to where the LG G2 is brighter than the S95B in any way quantifiable. This is something that is easily seen, okay, in any aspect. And I need to point this out in abundance with AI service being off, again, for probably the third time now, going into OLED device care and showing you guys this, right, where energy saving is turned off. I need to show you this in abundance because there is a lot of misinformation that the G2 is brighter than the S95B or almost as bright as the S95B when it's not even close. It's not in the same realm, the same stratosphere. These are entirely two different animals and I need to replicate that because if I don't, a lot of people are gonna to try to complain or pretend like it's not the case. So again, that's just, again, and, and this is uncalibrated. This is literally just like standard. We're just trying to push the most luminosity we can out. We're not trying to calibrate. If you calibrate, the peak brightness drops even further, as I did here. So I'm gonna go to the standard user settings, as you guys see here, and that's what you're really gonna appreciate. That's your difference in brightness right there. So this entire comparison is me basically, really, if I'm being honest, nerfing the S95B's brightness so that the uh, LG G2 has a fighting chance. Because otherwise, from a brightness perspective, there is no leg it can stand on, especially post-calibration. So I went ahead and lowered it back down to 36 and medium on the peak brightness for the uh, Samsung S95B. 
And as you can clearly see, there's obviously still a brightness difference, but we're going to go ahead and continue forward with some of the differences we can see. And again, the, the highlights are where you're going to see the biggest difference between the two, and it really does make an impact. Again, at moments like this, where he's playing the saxophone, or again, every, every little glimmer is, is really what you get on the S95B. Like, all the trails of light are brighter. Like, look at the yellow now, okay? We've got the yellow in the background with the ambient light, the practical lighting in the scene, looking so much better than it does on the uh, LG G2, where again, that's dimmer, but counteractively, it's producing, in my opinion, an equally rich picture. So I do like the ambient cyan cast that the S95B doesn't have. Instead, it's just making this appear all white right over here, where it's supposed to have a little bit more of a cyan cast to it. Skin tones are pretty much equal. There is more vibrancy being kicked off from the ambient light onto his face around this area. So those are things that I can appreciate. But honestly speaking, that's where it starts to get hard because they do come back and forth in some aspect. Like now, for example, at a glance, if I were just to look at these two images, they look extraordinarily similar at a glance. Paying close attention, I can see like a more aggressive dimming happening or lack of brightness on the G2 where this highlight is dimmer than this on the S95B. And again, these are going to be the things that really take away from contrast. The contrast as we know it in TV technology and in general is the difference between light and dark. And when you have contrast differences being blasted through with such a high level of luminosity, you can get more depth out of this. I know it doesn't look like that on camera, but trust me when I tell you, the depth comes out so much stronger at times on the uh, S95B than what LG is capable of producing. So then why then did I say it was a tie? Well, again, in moments like this, they both appear very, very identical. Like it would be very hard pressed to tell a lot of a difference between these two Again, at a quick glance, not like sitting here and pixel peeping like I'm doing here. If I'm pixel peeping, the S95B is sharper. You have more detail in the bow. You have more luminosity on the cheek. But notice what I keep saying. It goes back to luminosity. So then what then are the gains of the Samsung, or, or rather the LG over the Samsung? I would say if you're somebody looking for an LG G2, your biggest gains are going to be that you have superior motion processing over the S95B. Now to prevent this from getting blocked worldwide, I can't play this scene, but what I can do is tell you that the anime that I'm using on Crunchyroll is called Divine Gate. It's season one, episode one, Endless Rain. It is six minutes and 31 seconds into this particular anime. When this motion happens and they start running, if you pay attention to things like hair and things like that, that's where you'll notice motion artifacts more prominently on the Samsung S95B than you will on the LG G2. And frankly, anything that simulates this similar level of motion where there's, uh, again, a horizontal running across the screen and a bunch of bouncing all around throughout the, the frame, that really does trip up the S95B more than the LG G2. And that's something to keep in mind when we look at these things because, again, that's what you're going to be experiencing in real context. And especially like if they're running, like in an anime scene like this, they're running and then they zoom in on just the character's face and they're talking and you see their teeth and their mouth moving and animated, but they're also bouncing up and down and running. More artifacts will show up factually on the Samsung S95B than the LG G2. And that is something that you have to weigh up. If you value motion more, the LG G2 is just going to give you way more for your money. So if you look at this image on the screen right now, again, the same anime, we're in the Divine Gate here on Crunchyroll. If you look, you can kind of see what I'm talking about in terms of color. There's just a world of difference that that extra brightness brings out. It's a richer, more vibrant shade of color. Again, LG does a great job. It's not to say that they're doing terrible, but again, it's one of those things. Now, if it looks like LG has more depth than Samsung, it doesn't have as much as my camera is showing because I look on my camera and it looks like LG is just like way more 3D than it actually is. It does have a ton of depth and it still does have more depth than the S95B, just not to this extent. Now I say depth because in this example, it's a dimmer image allowing you to get more of those fine details out. And I think consistently, that's kind of one of those things I do appreciate with the LG G2 is that it's able to pull out a lot of fine details that would normally go missed. So if you like fine details, 
it does give you that, but it's not sharper than the S95B. So it gets a little conflicting. It gives you more of the details. So like isolation of subjects, things like that, but it's not going to give you like the, the clarity, the tack sharp, like crystal clear, like holy shit, I'm looking through it instead of at it feeling to the same degree that the Samsung S95B would give you. In terms of gaming, I would say the edge goes to pretty much both of them. But again, it goes back to what I was saying. Motion is gonna go to the S90 or to the uh, LG G2. The G2 is just so much more fluid that in motions like in Spider-Man, where you're swinging around and he's moving around very fast, it just looks better on the LG G2. But then again, when I look at that color difference and that luminosity difference, it makes so much more of a difference that I end up gravitating more to the S95B for gaming, even though the motion isn't quite as buttoned up as it is on the LG G2. And again, I think if you're the kind of person that likes intense, vibrant, beautiful color with really rich, very strong highlights, the S95B is just where you're going to go. This whole scene is basically like a ballet of excellence as Spider-Man leaps over everything. And the S95B is just really capturing my eye in terms of what it can produce with the color. But the G2 is no slouch either in that I have all the details in the world. It is a very clear image and it's wonderful, really. I have no complaints whatsoever outside of I wish LG would have gone with Quantum Dot. Because I feel like if they would have gone with Quantum Dot OLED, it would have been, oh, oh man, it probably would have been in their favor. They probably would have won this whole thing. But it's, it's one of those things where it's like that not doing that kind of holds them back because now you see Quantum Dots have a real big implication on the market. And I mean, really just looking at every highlight that exists, it's just so much more immersive is the word I would use. I think one of the areas where you'll see the biggest gains is in football. I think if you watch, you can clearly see that the LG G2 does a better job of making less digitized motion with less artifacts around the feet. You see, when they start running, like in this example here, okay, like if you pay close attention, like to the feet in this, mo in this moment as he's running across, when his feet does this pitter-patter motion, you can clearly see more artifacts throughout that pitter-patter motion on the S95B where LG keeps it more consistent. However, the grass, the entire scenery is a lot more dead on the G2 as you can clearly see. And I think it's really gonna boil down to like how much motion matters to you because the overall impression is that like, like even now, like it's weird, like, okay, so as he was just running and he was just bouncing, the S95B was cleaner for that motion. So sometimes the S95B does get an edge and it does pull ahead. But again, it's not in every motion and, and you have to really pick and choose your battles as to like what you're willing to accept and what you're willing to compromise because between these two, you are going to have to give and take. And that's, I think, the relationship with all TVs nowadays. But this is definitely one of those scenarios where it's more of that than the other. So at the end of the day, when it's all said and done and we are looking at the differences between the two, the Samsung S95B is going to give you the better clarity, the better depth. Their real contrast enhancer this year brings a lot, especially out of content like this. Colors are gonna be more vibrant. However, I do I do wanna say this, okay? This is important to note, which is why I'm using this demonstration specifically. This is LG's demo here, their secret garden. Uh, this is on the 4K Media Group's YouTube channel. You can find this demo easily. It's the LG 4K demo, secret garden in Dolby Digital, okay? This will show you LG is still capable of producing identical reds at times. So it's not all blood orange. It's just certain shades get really wonky and really messed up. But I've gotten it to a point through my calibration settings to where I was able to alleviate that to a great degree. So as you can clearly see here, they're almost a like for like. And in this, they kind of look richer around the, uh, around the rim there in some aspects. So it's not all bad. Now I say look richer because they do in some aspects of it look a little richer. Again, and we're talking about on camera. But in reality, as I look at it, I look carefully, the red just pops so hard on the S95B. Again, not to say that LG is not doing a good job. They're doing a fantastic job. I really love the G2. It's an amazing TV, but it's not doing as great. But this is one of the examples I wanted to point out where reds can be almost as strong, I would say, as the S95B. Just a little less intense. And that's impressive considering it's WOLED. And that's why I say, if they ever go quantum.oled, it's probably game over. But again, at the end of the day, it boils down to this. The color advantages are going to go to the Samsung S95B. It's more vibrant. It has the extra luminosity in spades to where pick a luminosity range that you want in HDR. And it kind of feels like that because 
going up to over 1500 nits, this thing is able to produce really amazing, impressive image quality that just blows your mind time and time again. And 1500 nits is my SDR rating, not just my HDR rating. So again, measuring this out, doing all this stuff, I'm telling you, it's incredible. And again, looking at the two, they are incredible, but you are seeing those differences. I mean, look at the color purple right now. Look at the green in the background. The Samsung just has the better skin tones in this example. All of it just is in a more intense picture where LG does tend to look a little bit more dated in this. So there is that compromise of ambient light. It's not going to look as warm when the sunlight in this scene hits. Things like that, you are going to have to make those compromises and you are going to have to figure out if that's something that you want to make a compromise on. And again, it, it does have fine details. They are nice, but again, it's the tack sharp clarity going to the S95B. It's going to be the... Uh, color going to the S95B, the brightness and color volume going to the S95B, which is better for HDR. Um, I still prefer to use exclusively SDR. That's my prerogative. Um, and again, and, and you can see it in moments like this. You can see just how big of a difference that red is. And again, I mean, it just freaking pops right there versus there where it's not really as intense. And that's really the whole vibe of this television. And again, but it's not bad though either and that's where i get a little conflicted and i'm like man it sucks it does tend to tie in my opinion because it's like while i might not like the lack of intensity behind that color it's not bad and i can totally see how people would love that because it's totally acceptable and fine it's just not the next level and the thing i think for me though where even though i say picture quality wise they definitely do tie where it leans more in the favor of the s95b for me personally as a personal preference I find it unacceptable that it doesn't come with the stand and it does sit at an incline. It leans back and that is something that sitting next to the S95B, it is easily noticeable. That and then the lack of the highlights that I get on the S95B, I mean, look at the scene. The S95B is slaughtering it. It's destroying it. It makes the LG G2 look like a data TV and it's the same year that they were both produced. There is a real gain from having these quantum dots and I know this is a long video, but I'm telling you, man, that's the takeaway from this entire thing. So I hope by making this really long, drawn out comparison, you are able to tangibly see and feel these massive differences between these two displays. You can see it here, you can see the color gains, you can see the highlight gains. I mean, look at these cookies, man, it's crazy. Thanks for watching the number one Brandon Odyssey, and until the next video, I'll see you guys later.